Welcome and let's talk about the BMAT. For starters, the BMAT is required for students applying for medicine or dentistry at select universities in the UK, Singapore, Thailand and some European institutions. If you're looking at medical programs at Oxbridge, UCL, Imperial and the NTU Lee Kong Chin School of Medicine, this is the test to take. The maximum BMAT score for the first two sections combined is 18. At ICOM Plus, we're proud that most of our BMAT students score above 11, which make them competitive for the best medical programs. So, what's on the test? Well, the BMAT is a two-hour pen and paper test, which consists of three sections. The first two sections consist of multiple choice questions and are designed to test problem-solving skills and the application of scientific knowledge. The third section is a writing task, where candidates complete one writing prompt from a choice of three questions. Importantly, no calculators are permitted. Guiding you through the solutions is Lynn. She's a graduate of Yale Lanyard College and is a highly proficient test taker. Lynn has obtained perfect scores in the ISAT, SAT Math, and PTE. Additionally, she has scored in the 99th percentile for the SAT and UCAT. Basically, you're in great hands! Now that you're more familiar with the format, let's get you acquainted with some sample questions. Before we begin, you may want to have pen and paper ready. In a moment, questions will pop up and you are encouraged to try them out as we go along. Pause the video when you are attempting the question and resume when you are done. Our expert coaches will then follow up with the solution. Are you ready for question 1? This question is asking for the assumption behind the police's decision to implement color psychology. From the given information, we know that their goal in doing so was to improve the success of interrogation. This would only make sense if they believed that the color scheme recommended by color psychology would have some sort of positive effect on the result of interrogation. However, if we look more carefully into the given information, we are only told that the use of certain colors can help reduce claustrophobia, can have a positive calming mood enhancing effect, or it can enhance communication. In other words, the use of certain colors has the effect of making people feel at ease. None of this is actually explicitly linked to interrogation which means that the police must have assumed that there is a relationship between the subject's level of comfort, which is what we are given, and the results of interrogation, which is what they are trying to get at. They must have assumed that when people feel at ease, they will be more likely to speak the truth during interrogation. That is how we know that option A is the correct answer. Among the remaining answers, B is completely irrelevant to our argument. There was no discussion at all inside the argument about psychologists or what they know or do not know. C is an overly absolute statement. While the argument does claim that color psychology can help, help calm a suspect down, it never actually implied that color psychology is the best way to do so. D and E may very well be factually true, but they are out of the scope of the argument because the argument never at all discussed intimidation or the various interrogation techniques. Therefore, we are left with A as the only plausible answer. Logic puzzles sometimes require a little bit of trial and error. But when you are under a time limit, there is a huge difference between random trial and error and informed, systematic trial and error. 
one correct but probably not very efficient way to approach this question is to just try out each pair of statements individually until you find the two statements that cannot be true at the same time. Since there are four statements that gives you six possible pairings to try out one by one until you find the answer. It would actually save us a lot more time, however, if we realized that we are given so much more meaningful information about the right hand back as compared to the left hand back. For the right hand back, we have specific information about the marbles in the back after the two moves are done, but no such info is available for the left hand back. Therefore, we can predict that statements two and four, which talk about the right hand back, will probably be easier to analyze simply because we have more information. We should then try to inspect this pair of statements first before considering the other ones. So first, let us suppose that statement four is true, so that all marbles in the right hand bag were originally the same color. Since in the two moves, only one marble was taken out of the bag and then another one was put back in, at the end, it could only contain at least one marble of the opposite color. Since we know that the final proportion of red and green marbles in the right hand bag is half and half, this means that it must only contain one red marble and one green marble. The total number of marbles in the bag is therefore two, so statement two cannot be true. Therefore, just from this, we can already choose E as our answer without even needing to look at the other choices. For this question, we need to understand the properties of alpha and beta particles and apply that knowledge to interpreting and solving the problem. Specifically, we need to know that when a sheet of paper is placed between the source and the detector, beta particles won't be blocked, but alpha particles will be stopped by the sheet of paper. Therefore, the 60 counts per minute detected only comprises the beta particles and the background radiation. Since the background radiation is 20 counts, that means that 60 minus 20 or 40 counts per minute must be caused by beta radiation. Options A, B, and E can be eliminated, leaving us with C and D. Since we now know that 40 counts are due to beta particles and 20 counts are background radiation, we can subtract these two numbers from the original 280 counts per minute, so the remaining 220 counts per minute should be due to alpha particles. Hence, the correct answer is D. How did you fare? And no worries if you weren't quite there. To best gauge your performance, we encourage you to sit for a diagnostic test. Lucky for you, Icon Plus administers free diagnostic tests and you can register for it directly on our website. With over 20 years of experience coaching students, Icon Plus is the go-to centre for all your test prep needs. Our expert coaches hail from leading institutions and our resources are unparalleled. Come chat with our consultants about how we can best support your learning goals. We look forward to meeting you and all the best as you take your first step to success.